This is kiln unloading number three, bacon, hound's tooth, and zebra stripes. All the work you're going to see in this kiln load is cone six porcelain that's been dyed different colors with different mason stains. Now you can purchase mason stains online either through a ceramic supply store or a main mason stain supplier. So this is a small kiln load, but there's a lot to be enjoyed about it. Let's get started. Let's start with the zebra stripe cups. This is actually one of the oldest patterns I've made. You'll find it in the Narakomi Technique compilation video, and you'll find it in the Narakomi and Agateware pattern video. The colors you see in the stripes are the same colors you might see on the other half of the cup. Again, these colors were all made by adding mason stains to white porcelain. This is 8% red, meaning 8% added by weight. 8% blue, and then 3% black, because black's a little stronger, it'll show up darker with a lesser amount. I tried a variation of orientations for the stripe design. I tried adding kind of a half and half color and white layer for the bottom slab. You can see that from the side section. This was the first more serious set of work I made with the Narakomi process. I'm a big fan of these cups. They are definitely my favorite design so far. I have a couple of new ones in the works that haven't been fired yet, but these I'm very, very happy with how they turned out. Next, bacon cups. Now these get their name from what you'd expect. It kind of looks like bacon. This is just a variation of different amounts of red added to that porcelain. I could have added pink, but again, if you add different colors and different variations, you get lighter or darker versions of those colors. So this is 10% red, 5% red, 1% red, and then plain porcelain. What do you think of the bottom of this one? Pretty excited about it? Let's get a closer look at that. These were a little more difficult to make because the 10% red added becomes a little bit short, meaning it's less flexible, less bendable, harder to work with. It's still workable, it just has more of a chance to dry faster and warp more because more of it isn't clay. Still, they turned out pretty good, in my opinion. And of course, the hound's tooth. I don't know if you recall seeing the extruder video, but I made this using a die that I cut myself. If you check out the easy you know, DIY clay extruder video that I've made in the channel, I'll link it up right here. I made my own extruder using PVC pipe and a caulk gun. And I was able to shoot out this design, then stack it. Now I realize this isn't perfect town's tooth, but it's close. And there's room for improvement. You can see a lot of cracks in this work. Now the more you work the clay, the drier it gets, and then when you're attaching all these pieces together, you're kind of asking for this to happen, especially when you bend it the way that I'm bending it. 
So after you make a big block of Narokomi, it's good practice to wrap it up in kind of a, a damp rag and a bag and leave it there for a week. Some people will say a month, so all the clay can kind of soften up to the same consistency, but sometimes you just can't avoid this. Part of the process is risking this happening. Nonetheless, I'm really happy with how these pieces turned out. Imagine if all those hound seeds had different color designs within them. I feel like the possibilities are endless. And these were all the pieces that were in that kiln, but I fired one before that that I had to unload, and I wanted to show you what those pieces were as well. You might remember this piece and this piece. These were from the Agateware versus Narakomi throwing video. I wedged up an Agateware block of clay, I made a Narakomi block of clay, threw with both of them, and then carved through the outside to expose the layers. What I love about mason stains, Narakomi, and Agateware is that once you fire them, those colors get so much richer and more bold. We got these two twisted tumblers in this kiln load. These have a variety of reds and some purple for this first one. And look at the foot, isn't that foot beautiful? It kind of shows you how much twisting the wheel imposes on the piece. You know, the bottom is more simple and blocky, but then once the wheel twists it, those lines get ever so faint and ever so detailed. This was 1% red, 3% red, and there was some purple thrown in, which I actually made for mixing blue and red, which you can do with mason stains. And this was similar. I had 1% red, 3% red, 1% black, and then that purple as well. I forgot the percentage on the purple. And I have one more surprise for all of you. Does anybody here remember the synchronized throwing video, the triple wheel throwing, where I made three twisted tumblers? One was red, orange, and yellow. One was blue, gray, and white. And then one was a rainbow mixture of colors. I threw them all. Then I trimmed them all in a different video. And the end of that video, I had them spinning slowly on the wheel. It was a pretty nice shot. I was really happy with it. And then, maybe you've done this before. Instead of just carefully turning the wheel off, I stepped the wrong way, maxed out the wheel, and the pieces flew off in every direction right after I finished filming. Maybe you've experienced this before. So I just finished trimming these pieces that I was really heavily invested in. My heart was invested in these pieces. They flew off the wheel onto the floor. They were dinged up and so I just picked them up in a fit of rage and smashed them into the ground. Here they are. Look how nice those colors were. So much potential. But you know what? I decided, hey, I'll just make them again. So I made this one. 5% blue, 1% black, 3% black, plain porcelain. I forget the percentages, but this is a rainbow mixture of colors. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, gray, black. And then red, orange, and yellow. All 8%. So even when that piece flies off the wheel, or even when you trim through a piece that you're really invested in, it does not mean you can't make it again and make it better than you did the first time. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what piece is your favorite, and I'll see you in the next one.